All right, well, what's up, y'all? How you guys doing? Hope you're having an absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing evening. Uh, welcome once again to another episode of the Pre-PT Grind Chat Live, where every single Thursday night, Casey and I uh, come into this group live and, and talk to you about a topic or a piece of knowledge that would help you get into PT school. For those of y'all that don't know us, uh, we are Casey and Joseph, um, and we are both physical therapists. We are also PT school acceptance coaches. And as uh, the, the, I don't, the coaches of pre-PT ground, whatever you want to call us, um, we help you get into physical therapy school without wasting time or money. So those are the things that you're looking forward to. You're like, man, I want to get into school. I want to get into physical therapy school. I, I need to figure this thing out. I'm nervous. I'm stressed. I don't know what I should be doing. Then you are in the right place. And I uh, hope tonight's topic actually uh, helps you get closer to that goal. Um, and so um, what we actually do, and, and it, just letting you know, just so that you can be on the lookout for this in the future, is um, we usually put up a poll. We put up a poll inside of this group and we say, hey, uh, here are two topics that we want to talk about. Uh, which one would you prefer to hear? And then uh, whatever you all vote for, we talk about on this uh, chat live. So y'all voted for this. Um, and the topic for tonight is what we wish someone else would have told us. Uh, before applying to PT school. So, uh, Casey, before we get started, man, how you doing, brother? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's pre-Friday, uh, so I can't complain. I like that. It's pre-Friday. <laughs> Friday, Jr. Friday, Jr. I like that. I like that a lot. So, uh, for those of y'all that are watching live right now, can y'all comment hashtag team live? Uh, for those of y'all watching on replay, just say hashtag team replay so that we know that you're here. And um, if you hear something tonight and you're like, man, that was really, really helpful. Uh, that is something that I would love to share with somebody else. Feel free to tag your friend, uh, tag your pre-PT classmates, your peers, your buddies, uh, so that they can also learn from this as well. So um, y'all ready? We're ready. So uh, Casey, let's talk about this. This is a very different topic from what we typically talk about. Typically, when we come in here, uh, we have something very specific, like the GRE or uh, low GPA or uh, PT cast or anxiety or fear of rejection. We have topics like that. But this one is kind of asking you and I to kind of dig back and say, man, like, what are some things that we maybe figured out after the fact, whether that was after we got into PT school or after we became physical therapists. And we're like, like, man, that would have actually helped to know earlier. Like that would have been, you know, super impactful or important or uh, vital to know earlier. And it would have helped not, not only us, right? But our peers, our classmates, other students that, you know, may have wanted to become physical therapists. So uh, let's kind of dig deep tonight and, and figure what those things were. And then let's try to share them and kind of go back and forth. This is going to be a little bit more uh, laid back than usual. But I think uh, that what we share tonight is going to be absolutely impactful to the students that listen to it and say, oh, okay, I'm willing to act on this. I'm willing to take that wisdom and advice and apply it to my journey so that I can become a better applicant. So I'll, uh, what are the first thoughts that come to your mind, man? Like when you think back and say, man, like there are certain things that, you know, I know now that, that I wish someone would have told me before I applied to PT school, well, whether for you it was the first time or the second time, uh, what would some of those thoughts go back to, man? Yeah, I have five points. Do you want me to run through them or do you want to run go back them. and forth, run through them? Run, yeah, yeah, go. So, so I'll, I'll run through them first, then we'll, I guess, dive into them how we, how we wish. But number one, uh, I wish I would have known or somebody would have told me that competition is okay. Number two, I wish somebody would have told me um, the schools, the programs, the faculty, the admissions board, they study you. They study us, the pre-PTs. Uh, number three, prereqs. I wish somebody would have told me that prerequisite classes are really just weed out classes. Uh, I see this a lot on TikTok, especially. They're like, why do we have to take this chem class? Why do we have to take this physics class or this class? They're, they're weed out classes. I wish somebody would have told me that and that at least would have put me in a frame of mind as, okay, I know what they want. Let me just give them what they want to prove to them that I can do this. Uh, the number four is um, 
maybe this would have been a little too early. Maybe I wouldn't have digested this as a pre-PT looking back, but number four is that you have to make your investment worth it. So what you're paying for PT school, the time you're putting in, the time in and energy you're putting into your application, all of that stuff it is your investment and you have to make it worth it. Uh, it's not the school's job or the other PTs or, or whatever it is. It's, it's your job to make it worth it. Uh, the number five, I wish someone would have told me that I was the customer when choosing a PT school. Um, again, I don't know if I would have took that the same way I take it now, just looking back to how I was as a pre-PT, but um, that, those are the big five things that, that really come to mind for me. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so, so here's, here are mine. Uh, you actually, one of the ones that you talked about, about making the investment worth it was actually one of mine. So I had five initially, but now I'm going to take it down to four. All right. So here are my four. And then let's talk about this because for those of y'all that are watching live or listening to this on replay, uh, Richie, what's up? Christina, what's up? For those of y'all live, let us know that you're watching live. For those of y'all on replay, let us know as well. But, but this is just important because what you guys are hearing is, I mean, we got into PT school, right? We're physical therapists today, but our job is to kind of look back and say, well, like what are things we wish we would have known earlier? And how can we basically relay that to y'all kind of going back in time and saying, man, like what, what do we wish we could have basically taken back to ourselves at that point in order to help ourselves navigate through this whole process of, you know, becoming physical therapists, getting into PT school. Here, here are my four, right? On top of the one about investment. The first one for me is you have nothing to prove to anyone but yourself, right? I, th I think for me, a lot of the things that I was led to believe were the fact that I had to prove things to uh, my family, right? To my peers, right? Um, I was... I was in an environment where I was basically kind of told, what will other people think? That, that's kind of the, the culture and the environment that I was brought up in. And so I, I paid so much attention to what everyone else thought. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the fear of letting others down shouldn't stop you from following your calling. A lot of my fears were really more than just letting myself down. It was, wait a minute, if I don't get into PT school, if I don't do this, I'm going to let down my parents, right? Like I'm going to let down, and, and I was thinking financially, right? Because they had invested in me financially in high school and part of college and all that other stuff. So uh, time, energy, right? I also knew that I had a lot of people close to me that didn't necessarily want me to become physical therapists. So it was like, man, like now that I basically kind of went off on a limb and did this thing, like, like, what if I let other people down? Like, what if I let teachers down? People that have poured into me, people that had like said, hey man, like we're here for you. I was carrying that. Like thinking that if I did not get to the next stage, then that would basically kind of crush me. And what it actually did is it became more of a burden than, you know, than an actual help. And so uh, realizing that the fear of letting other people down should not fall. Like really in reality, I can't really let anyone down. It's their choice to feel let down, but that's not on me. It's not on me at all. Like I don't have nothing to carry for nobody else. It's mine. So my third one is it's okay to ask for help, especially when it comes to mental health. I was actually not bad at asking for help on academic stuff. I wasn't, right? Like the chemistry, yeah, G give me two tutors. Physics, give me another two. Like I, I was actually okay with that. Classmates, I was very okay with that. You know, I was okay with, you know, like Casey, like, like, like you know, peer to peer, like uh, tests. I, I was very good at that, but I wasn't good at asking for help in regards to my anxiety or uh, some of the other things that were affecting how I functioned. And I think, um, some of that is just stigmatized, right? Uh, but I'm now starting to realize later on, and this is stuff that I learned as a PT, and I'm still learning that it's okay to actually ask for help because a lot of those things hold us back more than we realize. So that's my number three. Uh, and then number four is it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, it's something that we obviously talk about a lot now, but, but, but don't get it twisted. Like, like just because Casey and I today say, it's never too late if you have a low GPA. It's never too, like, I didn't always believe that, right? Like, I, I always felt like there was always maybe another route if students were struggling, but, uh, but that took a long time to kind of build to the point where I was like, wait a minute, like, like nobody has a right to basically tell me what I can and can't do because of my struggles. I just have to be willing to take ownership of it, understand the situation I'm in, 
be willing to do what I have to do, right? Because if I'm kind of stuck in the mud, I got to be willing to dig myself out of the mud. I got to be willing to, you know, do what I have to do, whether that's GPA, GRE, whatnot, but it's never too late, right? And if I had known those things prior to applying for a PT school, I would have probably been able to deal with a lot of certain stresses a lot easier, right? I, I might have been able to help some of my peers a little bit more, but um, those are some of the things that I really wish I would have known. But uh, but Casey, I want to ask you this, man. And for those of y'all that are uh, watching uh, live, I hope this is helping y'all because all we're doing tonight is we're just looking back at our journey and saying, man, like what are things we wish we would have known? Casey, for you, what what's the one or two out of your five that that, that stands out to you the most that you might want to unpackage for us a little bit more? Um, yeah, probably probably the first one. Um, the first one I'd say with the competition. Uh, I think uh, for me and maybe some other pre-PTs, maybe one or two, just one or two out there might be like uh, fearing the competition uh, in a way that it's uh, hindering what you need to do. Um, you're, you're so focused on what other pre-PTs are doing. Uh, however, like we always say, they're not making the decision. And the thing about competition is there's nothing wrong with this. There's competition everywhere in our daily lives. It's, it's just a part of it. So with competition, if you can change your mindset about it and say, I'm not afraid of somebody being at my level, higher GPA, lower GRE score, I'm not worried about it because I have to run my own race. It makes you focus on yourself a little differently. It makes you basically play, for example, it makes you play golf instead of football. And, and what I say by that, and what I mean by that is with golf, there is no defense. Another pre-PT can't really, they can't get in your way and say, oh, I'm going to rip the test out of your hand because I don't want you to get into PT school, right? That's not, that's not the defense they can play. Now they can get a better score than you, like in golf, they can shoot a better score than you. And yeah, you might be on a lower place, but that's still competition. That's just a different game that you're playing. So if you change the way you're playing, like, oh, okay, this is just racing. This is just golf. And the better I do, the better I do and the more competitive I am. So why don't I just work on being more competitive so I don't have to worry about being less than others? So if I had that same mindset, I wouldn't have been like, oh, what are they doing? What is she doing? What is he doing? Let me just, and when I do that, they're focusing on themselves, apparently like in the perfect situation, right? They're focusing on themselves but I'm focusing on them, which makes me slow down in my own race. So just by the fact that I'm focusing on them, they're winning. Instead of me saying, how can I be as competitive as possible in this competitive world where everything is competitive? How can I be the best I can be so I can stand out and get accepted into the PT schools? Because on that last point, that is what's impressive to them. I used to think like, oh no, man, I can just do something else, man. My, my observations will stand out more. You know, my, my essays will stand out more and all that. And it does have a place. But in reality, what's really impressive, uh, impressive to them is if you say, shoot, okay, you want this GPA? Let me bust through this obstacle and say, all right, let me show you. Let me prove to you. Let me impress you. Let me stand out to you that I can give you whatever you want that I'm lacking in because they'll see all of that. So once I kind of changed my mind with that, especially the second time applying, it was, what? You can't tell me nothing. And once you go into that competition mode uh, with that kind of attitude and that swag, you go on the court, like, like LeBron, you go on the golf course, like Tiger Woods. That's why, they, that's why they're so good. You know, part of it, there's other stuff, but that's why they're so good because they put in the work. They don't fear competition. They love it. They love it. So if you can, you don't have to love it like them, but if you can just kind of tweak it a little bit and say, yeah, all right, I can, I can compete with the big dogs. Then you start focusing on yourself uh, to be better. Uh, then the last one, uh, the two that stuck out to me, the second one is, is the customer thing. Um, because I used to just put these schools on a pedestal, like, man, they are just the biggest of the best If they can only accept we little me. Uh, I'd be forever grateful. And, and yes, you want to respect them and all that stuff. But in reality, you're choosing because you're paying. You're taking the time out of your life. You're moving across the country or uh, all that stuff. You are the customer when choosing the PT schools. Um, so we've had other discussions on that as well. 
Uh, but that's, I'll, I'll just leave it there for now. Um, but if you can just kind of internalize that, you are the customer, um, I think it'll make your application uh, or your mindset around the application differently. And you just viewing this whole PT school thing and your investment a little differently. So yeah, how about you? Wow, wow, wow. First of all, for those of y'all that are live, I, I hope y'all caught the value that Casey just dropped on y'all. Like, like for those of y'all that, that were like, yo, that was that was valuable. Can you just drop a value? Say value in in the comments below because Casey just laid out like some 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 gems, right? Because when it comes to competition, that is a misconception, right? We we do feel like it's us versus everybody else. Like when we're thinking uh, there's only 40 seats in the program, there's only 60 seats in the program. I'm always thinking like a tug of war, like you win or I win, right? It's like, it creates the, this scarcity that actually overwhelms us more that actually leads most of us to not know how to actually function. I mean, some of y'all know how to channel the inner beast in those moments, but most of us don't, right? Most of us crumble because we, like we psych ourselves out and we think, man, like, shoot, like what if I put in all this work and I, I'm not as good as, I'm not good enough to compete with. And then all of a sudden now we're basically kind of, you know, throwing ourselves off. So I love that analogy of, you know, switching it to golf, right? Where if I'm better, I'm just better, right? If I'm if I'm stronger, I'm just stronger. If I'm more accurate, I'm just more accurate. And so uh, focusing on self and also golf is all in here too, right? So the, 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 the only thing that's really holding you back is in here. And so uh, so I love it, man. And obviously the custom part is uh, straight fire. So uh, really for me, I'm the ones that I said, um, personally, the, the, the one that I think is the most, uh, sticks out to me the most is the one about letting other people down. For those of y'all that are live right now, um, how many of you sometimes feel like if you don't accomplish your goal of becoming a physical therapist, right, or whatever your milestone is, you'll let other people down outside of yourself. Just, just say, say me in the chat if you feel that way, because that's how I felt with so many milestones in my life, including PT school, right? Even after PT school, but right now we're talking about getting into physical th into physical therapy school. So, 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 so that I think is is probably the most impactful one to me, uh, because it's it's permission to not have to carry more baggage than you need to, right? You know, I think as, as an individual, we have, you know, we have so many things pulling at us, right? Whether it's other people's expectations, whether it's um, what other people think we should be doing. Sometimes like, let's go to family. Like how many of us have, I mean, parents, parents always have this, this idea of what they want their kid to become from the time their child is born, right? So, 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 so obviously there, there's certain things that they may have wanted and you, you may know what those things are and you want to, uh, you know, live up to them. But the reality is when you get to be an adult, like you have the ability to choose because this is your life. It's your career. It's, you know, the results of those decisions affect you more than anyone else. And, uh, and the reality is, and I think for me, it's, it, it, it almost seems so basic, Casey, but it, it seemed very blurry at the time. The, the people that care about you and the people that matter will celebrate your milestones regardless. So, so, so if it's family, right? If I feel like I'm gonna let family down, like even if it's like Rocky, they're probably actually going to celebrate my accomplishment that much more, right? Like, like if you've really struggled and, and you've pushed and you've stayed locked in, they're going to be inspired by it, right? Like, so, so if you're like, man, I, you know, I got rejected once. I feel like I let everyone in my family down and you go at it again and you get accepted. They're going to be there like, yo, like they're going to be the ones celebrating with you. And the ones that aren't celebrating, well, they didn't matter to begin with, right? And so I think that's, that's it's, it's simple, but it's powerful because many of us really do carry more weight than we need to. The things that we need to be focusing on are the things that actually help us get closer, right? Whether that's retaking classes, whether that's understanding the schools and all these other things, but we have so much baggage that's actually blocking us from being able to deal with those things. And uh, that leads to self-sabotage and really a lot of the things that lead you to end up getting to the place where you're afraid you'll end up, right? It's, 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 it's crazy how it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so um, that's the one that I would say is the most impactful to me. Uh, because even today, I like, like even now with anything I, you know, whatever milestones I have now, obviously, if you know, it has to be in alignment with my wife and my son and my immediate family. But outside of that, it's like, like, <laughs> like, I can't, I can't see myself as letting other people down. Like, as long as I'm true to myself, 
as long as I'm true to what I want, as long as I, I feel aligned with whatever it is I'm trying to do, if I want to become a physical therapist and I want to do A, B, C, and D, as long as I feel aligned with that and I'm following that, then all I can look at is those failures along the way as learning points, right? So, all right, cool. Like it, it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. Cool. What is that tell? Like, what is that telling me? Right. Because I'm still trying to get there. Right. I still know that that's what I want. So what's that telling me? So now when I take off that baggage, I'm not looking around saying, oh, shoot, who did I let down? It's like, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I get myself back up? How can I do it again, but better? And then, of course, when I get to my, you know, my goal of whatever it is, and for y'all, it's PT school, then I can celebrate not only with myself, but with those same people that I thought I was letting down, who in reality were just cheering me on very differently, right? Some of them don't really understand what you're doing, so they think they're helping, um, and that's kind of where we got to be careful. But um, that's the one that I think would really, um, I, I wish I understood more of um, as a pre-PT, um, and I know it affects a lot of students today as well. So uh, that's why I threw it in there. But uh, but that's it. Anything else to add, man? That's it. That's it. Let's see if there's any questions. If not, we'll. Uh, hop over to the IG. So I hear, yeah, that was so valuable. The universe has your name on it. Can relate to that one so much. Yes, mine wanted me to become an accountant and that never happened. Yeah, mm. yeah, Christina, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> just just know that as long as you feel aligned and, and you're willing to, like, that's like the first step. The, the first step is like, all right, I know what I want. Then the second step is like being brave enough to step into that, right? And then the, the, the third step is being willing to take ownership and doing what it takes, right? I think when, when all three are done, good things happen. If all I'm willing to do is say, I, I know I want this, but I'm not willing to take the step, then I'm going to feel unfulfilled, right? If I decide to take the step, but I'm not willing to do what it takes, that I'm in a cycle that's basically not leading me anywhere. And the people that didn't want me to do it are like, see, we told you, right? And here you are believing them and psyching yourself out. But if I'm willing to do what it takes and I'm willing to basically say, hey, like, what do I gotta do? What do I need to own up? What can I change? What can I control? How do I do that? Who do I put myself around? And I'm willing to do those things. Those are the students and those are the individuals that end up breaking through that barrier and getting to their desire, you know, desired goal. And that's how it works. That's how it'll always work. It's the world, it's humanity. It ain't going to change. It's not going to change. So um, just ask yourself if you have all three, if you're respecting all three. Um, and if you are, then good things will happen. Just trust the process and you'll be good to go. So um, I hope tonight was helpful to y'all. This was a little different. This was not one specific topic. This was us kind of looking back and really just kind of pulling out a few words of wisdom based off of things we wish we would have known. Uh, so we hope that this was valuable to you. And if it was valuable to you, share it with a friend, tag a, a classmate, another pre-PT. Um, and we're about to hop on to Instagram and talk about this there. But I uh, hope y'all have an amazing rest of your night. Much love. Many blessings. Bye.